After completing the first task in the Triwizard Tournament, the four champions must learn about the second task through a large golden egg. Harry figures it out, of course, following Cedric's advice, where he puts the egg underwater at the prefect's bathroom. The golden egg is a mere prop and is quickly cast aside after the second task. According to the Harry Potter Film Vault books, the design of the golden eggs were inspired by the elite Russian jewellery brand Fabergé, who created lavish items for Tsars and the Russian elite. I love this reference because it alludes to medieval and modern European history as well as making the wizarding world seem more expansive. Hence this video where I explain about how a Russian jewellery company inspired the Goblet of Fire as well as provide my own headcanon and fan theory. I'm Madeline Rose Jones and I help you understand the world through fiction. Subscribe for frequent videos about history, literature and culture. Welcome to Snowy Fictions. Both Britain and Russia, being European countries who eventually formed empires and economic powerhouses while engaging in rivalry, have a history of diplomacy, war, shared ideas and culture. A well-known example comes from the Crimean War in the 19th century where Russia and Britain engaged in the so-called Great Game. The Crimean War is an interesting example because Britain was opposite to Russia as the Ottoman Empire enjoyed the support of Britain, France and Sardinia against Russia under the leadership of Tsar Nicholas I. Russia and Great Britain's diplomacy and contact goes back hundreds of years even as far as the fur trade under Tsar Ivan IV. Curiously, this is reflected in the material culture of the British royal family, who commissioned and collected jewellery from Fabergé or in the Fabergé style. In early 2019, I was in London and I visited the Buckingham Palace galleries, where I saw an exhibition about the Romanovs and the Crimean War, which were contextualised among British history. A more obvious example comes from Queen Victoria, whose granddaughter, Alex of Hesse, was married to Tsar Nicholas II. Unfortunately, both Alex and Nicholas, alongside their children, were murdered by the Bolsheviks in 1918. Today, Britain is home to leading scholars and writers on Russia, a personal favourite being Helen Raporet. Who has explored the connections between Britain and Russia, especially concerning monarchy. Decades later, a Fabergé like egg was designed by an Australian monarchist to commemorate the rule and leadership of Queen Elizabeth II. I'm mentioning this to illustrate the shared interests and histories Russia and Britain had over the centuries, even though they frequently clashed. Whilst geographically, politically and culturally different, there are many examples of the interests both civilizations held in each other. The Harry Potter series reflects Britishness, yet there are clear examples of other European and continental inspirations, an obvious one being the character Nicolas Flanel, who lived in late medieval France. The film props also mirror this. For example, the Slytherin Horcrux, a locket, took inspiration from Spanish Baroque designs. Of course, the Harry Potter series takes inspiration from many European cultures. Those familiar with ancient, medieval and early modern history are aware of the cultural encounters Britain had, from the Roman conquest to the Napoleonic Wars and to the present day. It's certainly true that the wizarding world has a timeless feel, not locked in a certain historical period. However, muggle history does shape the wizarding world, as seen in the creation of Ilvermoney, the wizarding school in North America, which is only possible due to the migration and discovery from Great Britain and Ireland. 
All of this makes the Russianness of the Golden Egg seem believable and organic within the Wizarding World. J.K. Rowling's world building on Eastern Europe is sadly scant and bare. However, I do appreciate the Russian reference within the Golden Egg. Secondly, I will share a headcanon and theory about the Golden Egg. I have always thought Victor Crumb was the first to figure the egg out. This is because the egg, not only based on the Fabergé jewellery, may have taken magical inspiration from Eastern European lands. In the wizarding world, everyday objects are used for magic, from cat hair to broomsticks. This trains wizards to see magic within everyday items and consider their role within the wizarding world. Because of this, it makes perfect sense for the golden egg to be seen for its magical potential. Wizards roaming through Imperial Russia and nearby areas would have picked up on these designs and created some of their own. Russian jewellery is a particularly interesting example, as while the Fabergé eggs appeared similar to other European jewellery houses in terms of style, they used Siberian amethysts within the designs, a unique offering by Russian geography in Siberia. Crumb, being a dirt um, strength student, a school with vast Russian and Bulgarian connections, managed to figure out the golden egg with ease, thanks to the keen teachings by Igor Karkaroff. My theory isn't so much about Crumb, more that the golden egg and items similar were taught in Durmstrang. It's quite hard to pin down the geography of specific Durmstrang, but there's allusions to Northeastern Europe, which sadly doesn't provide us with much. But regardless, we know medieval and early modern cultures of Eastern Europe showed a keen awareness of each other, whether it was through the Baltic Crusades, the aftermath from Constantinople's fall within the Balkans, Russia's rise, or the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Before concluding, I must speculate about whether golden eggs exist within the realm of dark magic. Figures such as Karkroff have a role in my theory, and whilst not all Durmstrangs are sinister and evil, there is a dark magic connection. Personally, I'd love to read more Wizarding World content centred around Eastern Europe. What are your thoughts on the golden egg in the Goblet of Fire? Do you have any headcanons or theories? Comments are always welcome, as with any of my videos. Perhaps you'd like to check out my Skillshare classes on creative writing out. I also run the blog Snowy Fictions, with many articles on Harry Potter and fantasy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.